It's a lot of scripture coming at us. Wow. What we just heard was the story of our salvation, beginning with the book of Genesis, the creation of the world, going all the way up to the time of Christ, to his death and to his resurrection. Earlier today, we had a kind of a rehearsal for the 20 or so uh, men, women, and children who will receive sacraments tonight. Five will be baptized. Some 14 others will be confirmed and will receive Holy Communion. A beautiful night for them and for their families and for our whole parish. I told them this morning that the Easter Vigil is kind of like the Super Bowl of liturgies. It's anticipated all year long. People get pretty excited for it. It takes a lot of planning. It takes a lot of hard work to get us to tonight. For those who are receiving sacraments, it's taken a step out in faith. They've come from a lot of different backgrounds, from different countries, from different ages, but they have come to the Lord to receive from Him the beautiful gift of His sacraments, baptism, confirmation, and Holy Communion. A few weeks ago, I heard a story about the Super Bowl. It was about one of the players for the Los Angeles Rams. His name is Cooper Cup. You may have heard of him because in this year's Super Bowl, he was the most valuable player. He was the best player in the biggest game. Well, a couple years ago, Cooper Cup was not a well-known name. People didn't know who he was. He wasn't very good. And he had a dream. He had a vision from God. Cooper Cup is a believer in Christ and was praying, and he had a vision that he would, in the year 2022, not only win the Super Bowl, but also be the most valuable player, the best player in the biggest game. Previous to that, his career was not going in the right direction, but he had this vision from God that this was going to happen. God had made this promise to him. And so from that day on, Cooper Cup basically trained and lived as if in the year 2022, he was going to win a Super Bowl and win the MVP. He would be the best player in the biggest game. And it happened. But for the last several years, the way that Cooper Cup describes it, he said, When I trained, when I looked forward, when I did all of the things that a professional football player has to do to be successful, he said, I did not train for victory. I trained from victory. I knew I was going to win. It's a beautiful analogy to the resurrection of our Lord. We know that Christ came, and we know that he died. And we know, and we celebrate tonight by the light of this candle, by those receiving the Easter sacraments, we know that he rose from the dead. We know it. There were witnesses to it. We just heard the gospel proclaimed. People saw it. People were there. People saw him after he rose from the dead. It happened. Do we live our lives as though it happened? Do we think that we have to earn God's love? Do we think that we haven't already won? I think we spend a lot of our lives kind of working on our faith for victory, as if we have to earn it, as if there's, I just got to do a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and then finally I'll reach the goal. Or... Can we, starting tonight, live our lives not working for victory, but from victory? Guys, we've already won. 
The game has been played. It's over. Christ is victorious. Sin, death, the devil, Satan, whatever you want to call him, he lost. But so often I think we don't live our lives like that. We live our lives as if we're somehow trying to kind of earn God's love. We're trying to get down the road a little bit further. When in fact, guys, it's already happened. We're not playing for victory. We're playing from victory. I want us to keep that in mind as we pray here tonight. As we celebrate the resurrection of Christ from the dead. But one thing that is on us, one thing that is on each one of us, and that is that Christ's resurrection from the dead, it happens. His resurrection from the dead demands a response from you and me. It's not something that we can be neutral about. The great C.S. Lewis says that Jesus Christ was one of three things, and one of three things only. He was either a liar, meaning he said he was the Son of God. He said he rose from the dead, but he didn't. And so he's a liar. The second option is that he's a lunatic. He thought he was the Son of God. He thought he rose from the dead. He was crazy. He's either a liar, he's a lunatic, or he is the Lord. For he is who he says he is. Those are the options. The, I really like Jesus because he's really nice. The, I really like Jesus because I, I like some of his teachings. That option is not there. Liar, lunatic, or Lord. The resurrection of Christ demands a response from you and me. We're going to see that response in these individuals who tonight are going to receive the Easter sacraments, baptism, confirmation, and Holy Communion. We're seeing them, not in their perfection, but we're seeing them take a step towards Jesus Christ, towards a life lived for Him, through Him and in Him. A life not trying to earn victory because the victory has already been won. So on this holiest of nights, as we see these sacraments played out right in front of us, may we live our lives not playing for victory, but from victory. A victory that has been won in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead.